what does that mean to you when you get a letter from uh, whether it be, Sweden. you know, yeah, <laughs> Sweden or, Tokyo. you know, maybe even from someone in Sykeston, what does that mean to you? And how do you feel when they're like, you have turned me onto opera and you've changed my life through this discovery of this medium? It's it's the length of these letters. It's it's the way it, 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 it moved people in such a way. And, and, and because of YouTube and all these, you know, social media sites, I mean, this thing just keeps going. I get a Google alert every day of somebody new posting, you know, this just this one video of me that's like 10 minutes long that audition and it just it it makes you feel like you've done something important in life you know even though you don't necessarily feel that your accomplishments you know were, were life altering or anything like that it you you do change people you give people hope and in this day and age with this economy uh, people like to like to think that the underdog can can ultimately you know make it you know, succeed and do something, and I, I know that my success changed changed uh, a lot of people in my town, and we've had a lot of successful people in my town. We're going to have more because they were inspired. Uh, we just, you know, we come from a great state, you know, with Missouri, and with uh, so many talented people, and you know, and there are a lot of people, and this is what gets me, what I didn't realize, if I don't break this chair. What, what people don't realize is that everybody at some point was that little, you know, 12, 13-year-old kid who had this uh, desire or dream to do something. You know, whether it was play football or baseball or, or to sing or to play guitar, you know, and, they're, and they're, for some reason, you know, life took over in circumstances. I don't know. Maybe, maybe somebody important to them passed away or, or, or they, <laughs> there was cancer or something, you know. But life ha has a way of, of snuffing out dreams a lot of times. And... I never grew up, you know, I was always that 12, 13 year old kid, uh, even, you know, well into my thirties, you know, I'll be 35 this year and I won the competition at 32, but, you know, just to have that idealism that you can just pick up one day and get on a train and go, you know, five hours up to Chicago and stand in line with 20,000 people and, and still think you have a chance, you know, that's, that, that's, that's childlike kind of, kind of mentality <laughs> and, uh, that people have been trying to, you know, get me to grow up for a long time and I've just never been able to, to quite do it but you know when people are have a desire uh, to better their lives they have to do you know extraordinary things you know they they have to they have to believe that that things can change and that one audition it, when I get these letters is you know for everyone you've gotten that on Monday they thought one way and on Tuesday they thought another way and they they see your face when they say that dreams are possible they you know they they fe they feel your passion they're listening to your music they 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 kind of want to they kind of want to be like you and with kids it just blows my mind because i i <laughs> i'll give you an example i went to um i went to this graduation in popper bluff missouri probably two weeks ago two three weeks ago uh for these kids who were uh you know, they grew up without fathers who were from broken homes, and they were all going in to get their uh, uh, GEDs, and this was their graduation. And there was this one kid, and I get this phone call, and I'm, I believe, in Nashville or Memphis. And I get the phone call from a friend. They said, you know, we told these kids to write about people who inspire them in their lives, and there was this one boy, I believe his name is Matthew, who th they said we had gotten one of the things and people were writing about, you know, uh, I think one person wrote about Tiger Woods, but you know, completely, <laughs> you know, t totally different beast. <laughs> but, you know, they're they're writing about you know Obama and the, and the presidents and and you know their favorite you know NASCAR guy and you know this one kid writes about me. He even had the E in the name, which is really important to me, Neil E. Boyd. But and he writes about how I inspired him to to follow his dreams and to graduate from school and you know if it wouldn't have been for the show he never would have made this life you know decision to and you just don't know that's not why you did it you know what I mean I mean you did it to you didn't know you were going to change so many lives and this kid and so I go surprise him he doesn't know I'm there so I go and I sneak up on him. He ends up reading this thing. They show the 
clip and I walk out from behind this room and and uh, walk up onto the stage and you I mean you could have heard a pin drop because and the second the kid saw me he was just like <laughs> you know and people start you know kind of clapping and stuff like that and I just I beelined on him I didn't acknowledge the crowd because I, I just wanted him to know look I'm here for you and you know whatever you know achievements you think I've done in life you have no idea how difficult it is to do what you're doing you know to be at this spot at this point where you've dropped out of school you feel like nobody believes in you and all of a sudden boom uh you're in this spot you did this all by yourself I'm glad I could inspire you and I want to shake your hand and tell you I'm proud of you and then drive back to whatever city I've got to be in the next day but it was really I mean to me it's heartfelt and I like to be able to do that when I can and I've gotten a couple of opportunities to do that and I will continue to and you can never get enough letters they haven't stopped coming in two years I got a feeling they won't stop coming because it almost, it, it almost sounds like they mean as much to you as you mean to them oh my gosh I mean it well and it does because you know being on the road it can get you know what's the word there goes the chair again. Um, being on the road is very uh, can be uh, very isolating, and you see this with a lot of stars. You know, it's just you know you're on the road, you're but you're living out of uh, suitcases, and uh, you're in hotel rooms, and uh, the cities change, and you visit these beautiful cities and never really get to go visit them. Of course, I've been to New York enough times now that I've I've seen enough of New York and LA. I'm I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> not really much else I can see. Yep. DC, I've seen it a lot, you know. But there are some cities that you know I just you never get to see because you're there for such a short period of time, and uh, you know record labels don't necessarily pay for the people that you want with you to to travel with you, and so a lot of times you go to these cities with you and your and your and your musical director and and your uh, your sound guy and your audio visual guy, and you've got this crew of people, and. Uh, so when you get those letters, it, it, it connects you, you know, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or, you know, all of these different uh, social media sites. Um, people are thinking about you and supporting you and loving you every single day. And uh, even when you can't, you know, you can always call home and talk to your friends and things like that. But it's, it's, it's you know, a lot of – it's the strangers or the fans, uh, people that – you have, you know, didn't realize a day ago that you impacted, uh, suddenly were inspired by you today. And there are a lot of these, you know, people, and they, and they want to hear more music. And it's fun to, you know, direct them to iTunes or, or uh, Amazon or Walmart or whatever it is to, to go get the music and the CD because a lot of them, you know, they've only heard you on the show from YouTube clips and things like this. And when they hear you have a CD, they just freak out. And they're like, oh, I'm going to go get it. And so you get more album sales, and that's kind of <laughs> nice too. But it's a little piece of you that they get to take home, and you know that letter's a little piece of them I get to take home with me, and I, you know, I, I try to print out as many as I can, put them a notebook because you know one, I, I know I know that that uh, this stuff is fleeting, you know, fame is fleeting, doesn't matter who it is, you know, people uh, will eventually get tired of you, <laughs> but at the same time, it's it's nice to know that at some point, you know, when I have a family and kids, and I've finally settled into that life I was uh, all my friends tell me I was supposed to have <laughs> you know the wife and the kids I can I can show them this little piece of of time when I made a difference in the lives of a lot of uh, of a lot of people and gave a lot of people hope and uh, that they could achieve the same success and it's going to be I think fun for me to be able to tell my kids that you know the sky's the limit I mean it doesn't matter I, I want my I want my family my kids to start off better in life than, than I actually get to start off with, but kind of have the same uh, drive and ambition and goals and understand that, that you could you could grow up rich and end up poor, or you can grow up poor and end up rich and end up poor, <laughs> and that you've got to have certain tenacity, character, integrity, um, and if you have a talent, you got to nurture that talent. you got to, you know... <laughs>